just gonna take my thumb off, okay? Ugh. Ugh. Got my thumb! There it is! You actually took your thumb off? Uh-uh. If you're there, raise your arm up in the air like this. Okay. If you're here, smell your armpit like that. No, don't do that! Tyson and Kendrick can't believe they just smelled their armpits. Are you guys scared of spiders or no? They can bite really hard. Like... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so I drew a picture of a spider to face my fears. I'm gonna make this picture of the spider disappear. One, One two, two, three. I just blow on it like that. And look, it is completely gone. Oh no, that's the back of it. What? What? Everyone say bye, spider. Bye, spider. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Wait a second. The spider is missing. I'm scared of spiders. It's got to be here somewhere. Guys. Oh, I see it. I, I, I see it. It's on your face. No, there is nothing here. There is nothing here. No, I see it. It's I, on your face. On my face. The spider is on my face. Yeah. Okay, it's gone. It's got to be gone now. No, it's if I... not. It's on your microphone. On my mic. Now it's on you. <laughs> Get off of my set, spider. Tyson, what do you want to be when you grow up? A chef. A chef. What is your favorite meal to cook? Waffles. Waffles. I bet when you make waffles, your mom probably freaks out and says, these are the best waffles I've ever had. Is that right? How about you, Kendrick? Your brother wants to be a chef. What do you want to be? A YouTuber. Do you mind if I eat my lunch? Is that okay? Can I eat my lunch during the interview? I'm gonna wash my hands first with some antibacterial soap, and then I'm gonna put some mustard on my sandwich. First thing I wanted to say was, I, I was actually... He put it on sandwich. What's so cool about making a sandwich is that you learn how to be like a chef. So you put some mustard in there, some cheese on top. Stop! Do not eat it, you Put hand on it. No, I put mustard on my sandwich. Why would I put hand? You put hand on it. Are you serious? Yes. Oh! Tyson, what is the most disgusting thing you've ever eaten? I don't even know. I do not even remember. I don't even know either. I know. What is it? Broccoli. I agree with you, but I know it's really healthy for you. Let's say there's only one cookie left and you and your brother both want it. Do you eat it really fast, hide it in a closet, or do you throw it in the river? Break it in half and then give a half to somebody. Wow, 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 wow. So let's say you're playing in the house and you accidentally break something. Do you A, glue it together and pretend it didn't happen? B, Hide it in a closet. C, break it some more so you can't tell what it was in the first place. Tell someone. That is the best answer. You see, that tells me how smart you are because you hear the question, you hear the options, and you ignore them all. And you're like, you know what? I know what the truth is. You tell somebody. Watch my hands. Watch. One, two, three. See that? Ooh, wow. Watch what I can do with the coin. I can put it in this hand. See, and then it disappears like that. See? There's nothing okay, in there. No, it's in your palm. I'm nothing in this hand. Disappeared. Okay. If it was in this hand, would I be able to do this? Yes. <laughs> it's still yes. your hand. If it was in this hand, would I be able to do this? Yes. If it was in this hand, would I be able to do that? Like that? Would I be able to do that? Like this? Yes. Huh? Yes. Like that? Because like I, my fingers are not touching anything. Like that? Fine, then you know what I'm gonna do? One, One two, two. hi -ya! Oh, you did not karate chop it. How do you do that? You guys were awesome. Thank, Thank you, Mario. Mario. Have a great and wonderful day. But before I go, I'm just gonna take my thumb off, okay? Ugh. Ugh. Got my thumb, there it is. You actually took your thumb off? Uh -uh. Thank you, Mario, I do not have a thumb. Hey, where did your thumb go?
today, we have the great, the legendary, the master puppeteer, Peter Linz. I like to call him Sensei. Ernie from Sesame Street. Walter from the Muppets. I can't believe it. I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, not, I'm a little bit nervous. Testing one, two, yes. We got the great Peter Linz, yes. P to the E-T-E-R. Peter Linz. It's gonna be on the show. The great Peter Linz. Peter Linz is waiting. He's actually waiting right now. So I'm just giving you a heads up. Peter Linz is in the waiting room. Participants, two. Check one, two, testing. Is this working, Mario? <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. We have questions from kids. I haven't looked at them. That's the rule. I just, yeah, exactly. All right, so I'm gonna look. Nervous. Um, <laughs> what's the weirdest thing you've done in the name of puppetry? That's a wonderful question. Most of the weird stuff I've done in the name of puppetry involves being stuffed inside of something. Like stuffed inside a, a partially hollowed out sofa or <laughs> stuffed inside an actual kitchen cabinet. I was like, you know, in a little fetal <laughs> position and my hand was through the wall and I had a monitor and, okay. Wow, that is weird. I, I got to know how dishes feel. Do you ever get into laughing fits on set? And if so, do you laugh in character or not? You definitely get into laughing fits on set, for sure. Oh, actually, we can't perform the characters at that point because we're laughing too hard. Usually when we start cracking up, the puppets just kind of fall down. And <laughs> When you see them slowly going down, you know it's over. Or, or, or even better, you're trying to stifle a laugh and, and you're watching a character on the screen and the character on the screen is shaking like this because we're down here. <laughs> <laughs> What's something you love that puppets can do that humans can't? They can say things in normal situations that a person would never say. Hey, man! Hey! Wow, this is cool, baby! I love you, Mario! <laughs> I love you, like, dude! And I, I probably would never say that to you just like that. But right. The puppet on the hand, he can say anything. This was actually built by Martin Robinson, the, the guy who plays Telly Monster and Snuffleupagus on Sesame Street. Wow. And uh, the one he built that looks exactly like this, and I just loved it so much, he uh, made me my own version of it. What a so, gift. So That's cool. amazing. He looks so cool, but he's really simple. I, I don't think there's a stitch on him. I think wow. Marty made him entirely out of hot glue and a sock. I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a yellow sock. It's unbelievable. Because the <laughs> set... those little fingers are just kind of hot glued. They're just cut in hot glue. They're the great. End. They got so yeah. much character. Well, that... wire is just a, it's, just a it's just a coat hanger that's been bent. Yeah. Love it. Do puppet voices ever come in handy in real life situations? I don't know what you're talking about. My computer says my internet connection is unstable. I think it means I'm unstable. <laughs> 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 what was like your first official job, Peter, growing up? When I was about... Eight years old, I did a puppet show for wow. my neighbor two doors up the, the street. It was, it was Kathleen Dowd. I was maybe eight, maybe I wasn't that much older than her. After the show, her mother gave me an envelope and I got home and opened it up and there were two $5 bills in there. <laughs> and I said, mom, <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Dowd gave me, gave me $10. I said, why'd she do that? <laughs> And so she paid you, you did a service. I had no idea, eight years old, there were already puppets on your hand. Oh, there were puppets on my hand since I was about three. Wow. And my earliest memory is being in preschool and they had a little stife, uh, it was a glove puppet of a squirrel. It was beautiful, it was mohair. And I could, I'd carry that thing around, I could make the other kids laugh with the antics that I would come up with with this little squirrel. And I just loved that feeling. Jerome, you know I love you. I know you love me. I'm doing a fish fry tonight. You wanna have some fish? Well, that sounds yummy. We had a kid correspondent that's a pescatarian. It's really healthy. Wow, a pescatarian? I don't get into religion, man. <laughs> <laughs> Name something on your bucket list. I'd love, I'd love for the, us to bring back the Muppet Show. And the other thing I'd love to do is, is, uh, is do some more live stuff. I'd love to do something in New York City, like you know, Radio City Music Hall or something. Yeah. With the Muppets. How cool would that be? Oh, totally. What's your most used emoji? Hearts and smileys. <laughs> How do we stop people from arguing on Facebook? I got rid of my Facebook and uh, um, I, uh, I don't see people arguing anymore. It fixed the problem. <laughs> you solved it. If you could give advice to your 10 year old self, what would it be? 10 year old self, you need to, you need to take some acting lessons. You need to take some improv and maybe don't study psychology in, in college. I mean, it's great that you're gonna get your bachelor's degree, but maybe do theater instead. Who are your heroes? Jim Henson. For sure, was a hero of mine. All the all the original Muppet guys: Jim, Frank Oz, Jerry Nelson, Richard Hunt, Dave Goles, who I have the great honor uh, to work with and call a friend, and my mom and dad. I mean, 
my parents were so supportive. What Mr. Rogers, uh, you know, always used to say, just you know, close your eyes and think about the people who loved you into being who you are. Mmm, well said. Wow. Jerome, do you think that kids should rule the world? It'd be a better place if they were just rule the world. I'm all about that. Do you ever eat from the green ball of sushi? I, I did that one time. I thought it was, I thought it was mint sherbet. Oh no. I tried the mint sherbet. <laughs> I, I was like, woo, mint sherbet. Oh no. <laughs> Do you have any advice you want to give to any of the kids that are watching that, that want to learn puppeteering? Wait, I can answer that question. <laughs> that, that guy doesn't know anything. About that guy doesn't know um, this is great. Just, just do it. If you want to learn television puppetry, like the Jim Henson Muppet style of puppetry, you, you get a, a, a moving mouth puppet like Jerome. Somebody has a, a mouth that opens and closes and, and eyes that can appear to, uh, to focus or to actually look right into the camera. He's not looking at you, he's not looking at you, he's not looking at you. He's looking at you. Get a camera and a monitor. I mean, it could be a camera hooked up to a television. A phone and a computer doesn't work. You're looking at a mirror image if you use a phone. But sometimes there's apps like like real mirror, true mirror or something so that you can you can hold the puppet up, keep your head out of the shot, and you can see what your audience sees. Mm -hmm. And what's tricky about that is everything's backwards. But, but if you practice it enough, uh, your brain kind of makes the flip. If I were at a live show and I were, I were doing this puppet, I'd probably just look like this. Hi, I'm Jerome. How's everybody doing? Good. Don't pick your belly button. But television or, or film, camera is much more intimate. I'm not looking at him directly. I'm looking I'm looking at the image of him. So, uh, so the magic trick is I'm making those eyes look right at you, man. I crossed paths with you. I was really lucky a long time ago. And you've left a big pit impact on me and my wife, Katie. I've seen you at Maker Faire, you know, uh, Maker Faire, New York City. Yeah, that, that goes both ways. I was blown away by your magic and your genius and your, your, your maker aesthetic, your, your performance, your, your oh, <laughs> you're amazing. All the love in the world to all the impact that you have on kids all over the world, the millions of kids. You really bring laughter and smiles to so many people. And uh, I feel honored to talk to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yes! <laughs>
You guys, the people that have been watching since the beginning, since March, you know this is all brought to you by Make Magazine, by Maker Camp, the Family Maker Camp Facebook group. Check out MakerCamp.com. Check out MakeZine.com. They are making this show possible, what you're seeing right now. And the people that have been watching, you know how this works. I get that crazy old 22-year-old guitar. I get my harmonica out. We do a dance party. This is only for the people that are live. Kids, if there's any kids watching, parents, comment with your kid's name and something that gets them excited, something that gets them inspired. I don't know. It could be anything. It could be about eating the green ball of sushi. I don't know. Something that kids, that you guys are excited, have your parents comment in the comments. We're going to sing about it. We're going to do a dance party. I will give you guys shout outs, where you're shouting out from. Shout it out in the comments. What do you think, guys? Should I get the guitar? This is only for the people live. This is going to be crazy. Get your invisible dancing shoes on. It is time for a dance party. Ha ha! Did you guys make it this far? Wow! If you made it this far to the dance party, cheers to you and a big hug, virtual hug, virtual fist bump, virtual fist bump to you guys that have been watching since the beginning. Dance party time. Have your parents write kids your comments. Let's get this show started. Everyone stand up. We're gonna do a dance party. When you hear the music, jump up and down. When I stop, freeze. Ready, set, go! <laughs> kindergarten. Ivy, that is exciting. Jump, jump, jump up and down. I say jump, jump, jump all around. Yeah, it's Friday. It's the Mario Show. Charlie's excited about surprises. Welcome to the show, Charlie. And Whitson is inspired by reading. No, that's not Whitson. That's Lily. Hi, Lily. Six. 
excited about sunshine and good weather. Mona, welcome to the Mario Show. It means a lot you joined in. And Quessy's excited about being home with Cindy. Quessy, it's so important to have people, friends, and people that believe in you, just like Mr. Rogers said. And Kelly loves eating ice cream, too. I love ice cream. Ice cream's the best. And Zayden says music. Hooray for music, because music brings us together no matter where in the world we are. Can we do a quiet spin? to me you guys tuning in dancing all over the world from cancun to all the way to india to all the way to i don't know where los angeles it just means so much and you know can we end with one thing before we all leave can we just remember one thing peter lynn's was so great let's remember one thing right here i wrote it down what mr roger said is so important take a moment close your eyes and think about the people who loved you into being who you are think about it those are the most important people there's no fame, there's no money that can buy that. We all have those people in our lives. Hold them close, give them a hug, and tell them thank you. Remember, it's always better to tell somebody what the great things they are that they've done. You guys did that today. It's so awesome. It's time for me to go. You guys, it's Friday. Enjoy the weather. Party, dance, jump, take care. Jump, jump. Same time, 